Hello ladies and gentlemen, TX141 here, also known as Paul, bringing you another Ace of the Day gameplay for the Arcade Mode of War Thunder. In today's installment, we'll be reviewing the P400, more formally known as the Bell Aircraft Aero Cobra P39D1 Model 14A. To give you a small historical overview on the Aero Cobra and said iteration of the plane, the Aero Cobra was designed to meet the 1937 X609 circular proposal as stated by the United States Armored Air Corps. In this proposal, the aircraft was to achieve 360 miles an hour at 20,000 feet on level flight, additionally have an armament double that of the already in service P-36A Hawk, and finally be able to sustain full throttle flight for well over an hour. Bell's approach was an interesting one, with an Allison V-12 engine being mounted not at the front, but in the middle of the fuselage, just behind the pilot. This meant that a 37mm Oldsmobile T9 cannon excuse me, could be mounted firing through the prop. The heavier armament was conceded as a very good idea, however initial test flights, including the opening flight on the 6th of April 1938, demonstrated that the Aero Cobra had one major flaw, and this was the lack of a turbocharger and therefore a lack of high altitude development and performance. If the turbocharger had been added, but it was never considered, then the Aero Cobra's shelf life would have been much longer than anticipated with most countries, including the United States, rejecting the Aero Cobra due to its lack of high altitude performance. The most successful nation to use the Aero Cobra was indeed the USSR, with a number of their highest scoring aces, including Purushkin and Rechlikov, achieving a great number of kills in their Aero Cobras over the course of the Second World War. The model we're looking at here, the P-39D1, mounts one 20mm Hispano 404 cannon, two 12.7mm machine guns, the first two armaments being based in and above the prop, and finally in the wings, a pair of 7.62mm machine guns, two in each wing, with the main amount of ammunition being stored with the 7.62mm machine guns, and a limited amount of ammunition for both the cannon and the 12.7s. The reason why the designation P400 was given to the P39D1 Model 14 was due to the fact that in September of 1940, Britain made an order for 386 of these aircraft to be exported under this designation. When Britain received said aircraft, a number of pilots complained that the aircraft were no good at high altitude performance. <coughs> Sorry. And as a result, uh, they abandoned the aircraft due to the fact that the western frontier saw a lot of dogfights up at higher altitudes rather than lower altitudes, by comparison with the eastern front. Ergo, the 601st Squadron, the squadron to take the Aero Cobras on board, only retained about 80 of them, with the rest going back into service with the United States Armoured Air Force following Pearl Harbor and the Australian Air Force. Let us not forget the engine of the 1150 brake horsepower V1710 Allison engine was a very good output engine for low altitude dogfighting, and hence why the Aero Cobra saw its limited use pertained to exportation on the eastern front at the end. However, how does the aircraft perform in War Thunder exactly? Well, the P400 is probably one of the most interesting aircraft I've ever played with, for the simple reason that when I first got this plane, I hated it to pieces. I found it was an absolutely dismal performer, both on the low and higher altitudes, even with the upgrades gradually breaking in. However, using my maturity and my experience, I've noticed that the P400 is quite the effective skirmisher. And you'll note in this gameplay on the ground strike map Lonely Island that this is my first ever gameplay brought from this map. Additionally, I'm taking a different approach here, using stealth ammunition for all of my guns as part of suggestions from you guys, and additionally because I thought I'd try something a little bit different. I'm additionally using a 250 meter gun convergence and a 30 minute fuel load. And this leads to the P400 being a near brilliant skirmisher especially for a map such as this where both teams usually try to tend towards small little groups on either side of the map. With three kills already in the bag, I'm now to pursuing a Messerschmitt 109mm, gradually closing the distance before opening fire. That ML1 out of the way, taking a little bit longer than I expected just because I'm a little bit out of hand with the stealth ammunition. I'm making my way back down into the fray to see if I can trace another target, having already achieved four kills. The playstyle I employ with this plane is, as I said, a skirmisher rock, whereby I'll try to get to a slightly higher altitude than everyone else, 
break it on the back of this level 3. Although they bank away, and because my new ability is not as great as theirs on the whole, I decide just to bank off and break away. So going back to the playstyle, the skirmisher role works very well for the P400, simply because if you take this plane up to about 2,500 meters to begin with, and no more, I wouldn't suggest going above 3,500 meters just because your engine performance does lack by comparison with your contemporaries at your battle rating, for example, Messerschmitt 19 ml 3s F1s, F2s, uh, Spitfire Mark II's interestingly enough, and additionally even some of the Yakovlev aircraft will outperform you as you start heading a little bit higher, even though both planes seem to be optimised for lower altitude dogfighting. Ergo, sticking to an altitude of 2500 meters means that your Allison engine can build up your speed quite rapidly. Therefore, when you go into a dive, you'll already be at speeds of at least 500 if not 600 plus, in terms of kilometers an hour. However, it is important to note one thing, that your control surfaces seize up dramatically at about 700 km an hour. It's something which I've only noticed in two other major aircraft, the Focke-Wulf 190A1, of which I will be discussing in a future video, and additionally the concurrent Spitfire series, the Spitfire Mark 1s and Mark 2s. This lock-up means that you can't exactly force yourself into incredibly long and extenuated dives. Instead, you have to pick your right moment, pick a group of targets that are within very close proximity, and make the most of a very tight situation. Again, as I pan to the right of my aircraft, my 3 o'clock, you can see that both teams are congregating in very small secular groups. As a result, I'm just trying to build my altitude in order to retain my speed advantage. It's at this point that I want to now cover the armament. A number of people complain that the armament in the P400 is quite lacking, due to the fact there's no 37mm cannon, a cannon that's more consistently present in the rest of the Aerocobra series planes as of uh, this patch. What's interesting is that the 20mm Hispano can prove absolutely deadly if used sparingly. Your 60 round rounds of ammunition, and sorry for my voice ladies and gentlemen, I've got a bit of a cold coming, is more than effective if you can get close. As I gradually descended behind this uh, Typhoon Mark 1B, you'll notice that my initial burst to achieve my ace was not enough, A because of my gun convergence and B because I was not close enough to make sure that every cannon round could hit its target. As soon as you get within a range of about 400 meters, the cannon, if you light it up on target, will sing songs for you. Ergo, you really have to pick your chances and your target at the right time. It's something which is not quite common to a lot of planes, due to their higher cannon armaments. For example, if you are to fly a Messerschmitt 109 F2, while you have a heavy machine gun, which is a 15mm heavy machine gun, you've got, a, I think, 200 rounds of ammunition, and as a result, you can afford to spray and play. Meanwhile, in the P400, while your machine guns have a lot of ammunition, most of the time you're going to be relying on your three main components the 20mm and the two 12.7s, all with limited ammunition by comparison with the 7.62mm Browning machine guns. Having taken down that uh, B5 and 2 and achieved our sick kill, we come round on the P400, just a sweet round, and we're quite lucky not to have been killed by that Bowfighter Mark 10 on our team, because we did cross their flight path. However, I'm, not, I'm always one for making mistakes, and therefore I'll learn from that one. And as I proceed away once again, I'm starting to note that my team is conceded ground, in the fact that a number of uh, friendly planes are still spawning in, and the enemy team has really penetrated far. With my armament not fully reloaded, I have to bank away from that Corsair and bank away from this Ryzen, trying to dodge the fire and flee towards this enemy Hurricane because they're at low altitude and not aware of my presence. This gives me an assist. And as I bank underneath another plane, a Heinkel 112, and bank left and over an Illusion 2, I'm noting that I've already taken quite severe damage to the main fuselage. However, let it be said that the P400 can take a few hits, most notably from small arms fire, although 20mm rounds will quickly make a short work of you, no matter what plane they come from, by comparison with some of your contemporaries. And really, this is where the P400 excels once again. I'm maintaining speeds of over 450 km an hour, even though I'm making long sweeping turns and trying to re-engage. I re-engage on an A6M3 Ryzen, completely scuffing my initial shot, and now you're going to see exactly why the 7.62s are not effective. I would say at that point that we put at least 100 7.62 rounds into the back of that A6M3. 
While we achieved a critical hit with the Remnant Cannon ammunition, we did not take them out, and they're still able to fly. However, I do not want to reload uh, my machine guns, just because I prefer to use up all my ammunition before taking a full reload. Pardon me. Now breaking up onto this Beaufort, I'm considering the alternative because there is an A20G to my right, but I decide to pursue the Beaufort because the A20 is unaware of my presence. I kill the Beaufort's rear gunner, and I use 50 of my 60 cannon rounds in order to take out uh, the enemy plane. Breaking back down onto this Ryzen again, and wasting all my cannon ammunition, I have to make good work of my 7.62s again, with the Ryzen seeming to ignore me and continue to fly. Perhaps their control surfaces are shot up and they're just trying to evade some action. As you can see, the 7.62s only really come into effect at about half a kilometer away. And so I have to get in closer, and closer, and closer. And in the end, it's just enough to put the A6M3 into the ground. Achieving my 8th kill, I now break away, reloading all the guns. And it's at this point that I start to detect that I've taken some engine damage. Especially if my oil temperature and my water temperature both have been well over their limits. I fire a small burst at Mitchell and then break back up into this H20 Havoc, taking out their rear gunner. Although I'm afraid that because of the rest of my teammates chasing the A20 that I have to break away. Just out of fear and spite of being shot down by a friendly rather than the enemy plane or any enemy interceptors. The main weaknesses of the P400, therefore, could be considered in terms of its overall manoeuvrability, whereby it loses manoeuvrability very rapidly as you take it to lower speeds. If you are going to consider turn fighting, my two best tips would be as follows. 1. Never try to turn fight below a speed of 350 km an hour, or at least start the turn fight below that speed, simply because this plane wire does not bleed too much speed in a turn. Once you fall below this mark, your turn circle falls to pieces. If you're wondering why I fired there, it was just to clear out the rest of my cannon ammunition, just because I don't want to reload the machine guns, as I've got most of my ammunition still remaining. The Mitchell dives down on me, although I managed to just break underneath them and therefore avoid any machine gun fire. And as I come around again, I'm just surveying the situation and noting that my team's pretty much lost. The uh, Another way of combating your weakness of maneuverability would be to use your rudder. Don't be afraid to use the rudder on the P400, it's incredibly strong as in it will force your plane round where uh, normally you're just simply turning the wings and pulling up on the stick will leave you chasing behind and eventually having the enemy plane on your tail. A good pilot will make full use of their rudder and at the same time make full use of their maneuverability with speed. And so that being said it's now time to review the stats. So on reflection, this gameplay showed that we managed to achieve 8 kills and 2 assists. Moreover, this allowed us to haul in just over 17,500 silver lines and just over 1,250 research points, with 508 of those going towards our research on the second of the Bearcat series planes. So on reflection, how does the P400 weigh up? Well, it makes for one of the most brilliant skirmishes I've ever seen in a game, especially for its battle rating. If you're able to just uh, dip in and out of the battle, picking your targets when and where necessary and making your ammunition count, then you'll quite easily take down any foe, bomber or fighter, without respite. Moreover, making the most of your speed will always lead to your success, because a P400 with a speed of less than 350 km an hour is a heavily exposed one. Don't be afraid to take a small amount of ammunition to your wings, simply because your plane will be able to take it, although extenuated hits, especially from cannon shells, will cause your fuselage usually to burst into flames, as I've found out on a number of occasions. Ergo, the player who can pick his targets well, sorry, his or her targets well, and know exactly how they want to escape from a situation, will be the one who succeeds. On reviewing the stats, by comparison with the rest of our team, we can see that we pulled a significant contribution in that gameplay with our 8 kills and 2 assists. However, it's nothing to boast about, because we still lost. Nonetheless, I enjoyed doing this review, and the P400 is a plane I will continue to fly. And with that being said, we could say that the P400 is quite brilliant for a P40 with a zero on its tail. Therefore, I've been TX1 for one, and if you've enjoyed this video, ladies and gentlemen, why not leave a like? 
comment or subscribe for future War Thunder content on my channel. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care and good luck in the skies.